Hello, I'm Paul Hudson, and in this video, we're going to look at implementing the coordinator pattern in iOS apps. I'm going to start by outlining what it is and what problem it solves, walk you through the code, then demonstrate a complete example with some live coding in Xcode. If you find this sort of thing useful, I have three tips for you. First, of course, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. I have lots of other videos like this one. Second, you should come to my weekly live coding streams, Swift on Sundays. We make full apps from scratch and more. And third, come to my site, hackingwithswift.com. I have well over a thousand articles and videos about Swift, all free, and most importantly, updated for the latest version of Swift. Okay, let's start by looking at the problem we're facing. When you first came to iOS development, you will have met UI View Controller. This lies at the core of everything we do in iOS development. But is it a view or is it a controller? At Swift 2018, Greg Lotelier gave a great talk where he revealed the true secret behind the name UI View Controller. And it was staring us in the face the entire time. This thing is a troll, neither really a view or a controller. And Apple's implementation of MVC isn't great. They really set you off on the wrong foot. You see, Apple likes to cram functionality into their view controllers, which easily leads us towards something we call massive view controllers where we cram functionality into those view controllers. For example, in Apple's default Xcode template for a master detail interface, the app delegate includes a core editor container and a split view controller delegate, where its main view controller has model object manipulation, core data code, navigation, table view delegation, and data sources. Now, people who add all that and more really shouldn't be allowed to complain about massive view controllers. But of course, that's easier said than done. When it comes to deciding what should be in a view controller, we'll find things like UI design, updating views with model data, responding to user input, saving and restoring state, data sources and delegates, animation, networking, navigation, and more. Now, some of these things we can get rid of fairly quickly. Your UI design, that should go into a UI view subclass. The same goes for your animation. As for data sources and delegates, they can easily be separate classes. But that leaves navigation. This is more complex than most people realize. It's there to control the flow in your app. So you just go from screen A to screen B to screen C. Or to handle different variants for devices possibly also different variants for A-B testing. And most of this goes into UI view controller by default, which is a real shame because that's already packed with functionality. This is where coordinators come in. They take over the control flow on your app. They can handle the device variants and handle A-B testing variants, but they never replace view controllers. Those things are still required. So the solution I want to present to you for these problems and more is to use the coordinator pattern to replace this control flow in your view controllers with a separate object that does it really well and really cleanly. This concept was introduced by Surush Karnali, one of my favorite speakers on iOS. And it starts with this line of code that you've written many times before. Navigation controller dot push view controller, some view controller, animated true. This is a child reaching up into its parent to tell it what to do. And what we're seeing is view controller A has to know about, create, configure, and display view controller B, a different view controller, which creates incredibly tight coupling. This is doubly bad if you're using segways in Interface Builder, because your flow is hard coded. You have no flexibility to rearrange or reuse them. When you switch to coordinators, that link between view controllers is broken. View controller A has no knowledge of view controller B. It doesn't care what's next. If indeed anything is next, you get true isolation. Instead, view controller A speaks to its coordinator. All it cares about is that it can post messages to its coordinator, which can then take appropriate action. And that coordinator is responsible for pushing and popping views. In larger apps, this coordinator is likely to be a protocol, so you can replace the whole thing dynamically and get a different program flow. Best of all, you can break up work into smaller chunks with sub-coordinators handling one part of the user journey. 
Now, given that we all agree tight coupling causes all sorts of problems, I hope you can see why this approach is so incredible. This takes three steps to do. First, we declare a coordinator protocol, what it means to be a coordinator in our app. We give it an array of child coordinators if it's going to use them. We give it a navigation controller so it can push and pop views. Plus, we give it a start method, which is called when it's ready to take over control of the app. Second, we create a concrete implementation of that protocol. I'll create one here called main coordinator. It has those two properties, plus its start method, which will create some sort of view controller, assign itself to be the coordinator for that view controller so it can report back changes, then push that to the navigation controller. And finally, in your view controllers, when something happens, you just refer that back to the coordinator. For example, without coordinators, you might say uh, a user tap method, create the view controller, assign a property to it, then present it. With coordinators, you don't really want any of that code inside your view controller. You want to say, hey coordinator, please buy this thing. And the coordinator will decide what that means and how that should actually take place. And all we're really doing here is moving one more thing out of view controllers. But it brings us one step closer to solid code with a single responsibility principle. The coordinator is responsible for one thing, handling program flow. Even better, rather than all parts of your app needing to know how to get to a particular screen, they all talk to your coordinator, who knows how to buy. No more repetition. And so, we stop having a hard-coded view controller flow in our app. We can show any screen at any point freely. We get true isolation between our view controllers. They don't understand there's a flow. They don't care there's a flow. You can use them whenever you want to, however you want to. Best of all, these coordinators are all code you control. They aren't view controllers. So there's none of those UI view controller quirks we often fight with. Once you're up and running with coordinators, you'll find they're easy to use. The only real speed bump is starting the app. You see, coordinators like to be there right at the start of your app, so they can control the flow from the beginning. It's not required, but it's nice. Okay, let's switch over to Xcode and do a code demo. We're going to start by creating a new single view app project in Xcode. I'll call this thing coordinators. As I said, first, we need a coordinator protocol that all our coordinators will conform to. So I'll create a new Swift file called coordinator.swift. Inside there, we'll import UIKit, declare a new protocol called coordinator, var child coordinators is an array of coordinator, get set, and var navigation controller is a UI navigation controller, get set, and func start. To make view controllers easier to instantiate, I usually add a storyboarded protocol that lets me create view controllers from a storyboard. So, I'll create a new file called storyboarded.swift, import UI kit, and then make my protocol. Protocol storyboarded, static func instantiate returns self. What this means is, whatever conforms this storyboarded protocol will have an instantiate method on the type itself that, when called, will return the type. Now, I'm going to provide a default implementation of this by saying, Extension storyboarded, where self is a UI view controller. Static func instantiate returns self. Let id equal string describing self. That will say a string called UI view controller for the class name UI view controller. And then let storyboard equals UI storyboard name main bundle bundle dot main. And finally, return storyboard dot instantiate view controller with identifier id force typecast as self. Now what this does is, it allows us to create view controllers in a storyboard that have the same storyboard ID as their class name. These must match. Because when we call someViewController.instantiate, it will use the someViewController as a storyboard ID in main.storyboard. So it will find that view controller in the storyboard, put it out, instantiate it, and typecast it. And that's why the force typecast is safe here 
because the view controller's class must always match its storyboard ID. Now we already have a view controller provided by Xcode for this default project. So open viewcontroller.swift and we'll make it conform to storyboarded. Now open main.storyboard. Select the initial view controller and give it the storyboard identifier view controller. Next, we need to create our first coordinator, something to start up the app. So I'll create a new Swift file called maincoordinator.swift. In there, I'll do import UI kit. Then class main coordinator conforms to coordinator. Give it its child coordinators array and its navigation controller. And I'll make an initializer that gives us a navigation controller. So I'll say in it, Navigation controller is a UI navigation controller. Self navigation controller equals navigation controller. We have to add a start method too, so I'll say func start. And now we can use that new storyboarded protocol. So I'll say let VC equals view controller dot instantiate navigation controller dot push view controller VC animated false. Now notice how this coordinator is not a view controller. We, again, we haven't got to fight with any of UI view controller's quirks here. Now that we have a coordinator, we need to use that when our app starts. So open the project settings and delete main for the main interface setting. Now open appdelegate.swift and give it this property. Var coordinator is an optional main coordinator. We need to create our window by hand now, because previously that was done by our storyboard, which we've now disabled. So we're going to modify the did finish launching with options method to create that window and also start our main coordinator. So we'll say let nav controller equals UI navigation controller, coordinator equals main coordinator, navigation controller is our nav controller, coordinator dot start. As for the window, Window equals UI window with the frame being UI screen dot main dot bounds. Window dot root view controller equals our nav controller and window dot make key invisible. We should be able to launch the app now and see something. There we go. It's not terribly interesting, but it works. So far, we've only shown setup. The main point of coordinators is to control program flow around your app. So let's look at how that's done. I'll start by creating two new UI view controller subclasses. The first one I'll call by view controller. And the second I'll call create account view controller. I want to make both of them conform to storyboarded. So I'll do storyboarded here. And here. Next, I'll open main.storyboard again and drag out two new view controllers. Here's the first. And here's the second. For the first one, I'll give it the class by view controller and use that same name for its storyboard ID, so our storyboarded protocol works. And for the second one, I'll use create account view controller, again for both the class and the storyboard ID. So these are clearly visible on screen, I'm going to add some labels to them. So I'll drag out one label into the first view controller, then give it the title by. As for the second view controller, I'll get another label, drag that out, and give this one the title Create Account. Now we need to add two buttons to the first view controller so we can navigate to the other two. So I'll drag out two buttons, one called Buy, and one called Create Account. We're going to connect those up to IB actions inside our main view controller. So I'll switch to the assistant editor and create by tapped for the first button. And create account tapped 
for the second button. Now all our view controllers need a way to talk to their coordinator. Like I said earlier, for larger apps you'll want to use protocols here, but this is a fairly small app, so we can refer to our main coordinator class directly. So, I'll add this property to all three view controllers. Weak var coordinator, optional main coordinator. And again in by view controller, and again in create account view controller. Now if you recall, our main coordinator has a start method which bootstraps our app by creating our main view controller. Inside there, I need to set the coordinator property to be self so that first view controller can call back to our coordinator correctly. So I'll say vc.coordinator equals self. At this point, we have three view controllers all being managed by a single coordinator but we still don't have a way to move between view controllers. So the next step is to add two new methods to our main coordinator. The first, to buy subscriptions, and second, to create accounts. So I'll say, func buy subscription, let vc equals buy view controller dot instantiate, vc dot coordinator equals self, and then navigation controller dot push view controller vc animated true. For the second method, we'll do func create account. Let vc equals create account view controller dot instantiate, vc dot coordinator equals self, navigation controller dot push view controller vc animated true. That's our coordinator code complete. So the final step is to go back to the view controller class we had earlier and fill in those two IB action methods we made. So I'll open the class, I'll scroll down and find by tapped, and here I'm going to say coordinator question mark dot by subscription. And in create account tapped, I'll say coordinator question mark dot create account. And now when I run the app, we should be able to navigate between screens freely. I can press buy to see the buy view controller, or go back and press create account to see the create account view controller. And now we have completed the functionality. No view controllers know what comes next in the chain or how to configure it. Any view controller can trigger the purchase flow without knowing how it's done. We can add centralized code to handle iPads and other layout variations, plus we get true view controller isolation. For more information on coordinators, check out Suresh Kanlu's blog, kanlu.com, or see my own articles on coordinators at hackingwithswift.com. And of course, if you subscribe to my channel here on YouTube, I'll see you in the next video.